Thanks, Larry. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Um, I was involved in um, an early iteration of this report. So I say I was involved. Obviously, Matthew did all the work. But um, I was then working for Oxfam, and we, uh, we launched this in Washington. Um, and it was looking at the impact of the 2008-2009 global economic crisis on um, budgets. So what was the fiscal uh, what was the fiscal impact? What did the fiscal gap look like? And it was um, an incredibly powerful tool to take to the IMF and say, look, we are talking about actual expenditure. We're not talking about projected expenditure. We're talking about actual expenditure. And actually, at that time, our message was very well received because. Um, that report showed that IMF program countries, um, in Africa at least, uh, were actually performing better in that they were the countries that had been more able to maintain counter-cyclical spending on these, uh, on these indicators um, during, that, during that global economic crisis. So uh, they wanted to engage with us because it was a good news story for them at the time. Um, uh, as Matthew alluded to, it's uh, less of a good news story in this report, so it's very worrying to see that IMF program countries are actually underperforming um, other countries in that they are cutting spend, cutting spending faster. Um, again, we're looking at a slightly wider now set of set of sectors. So this is this is really worrying. Um, it, uh, the IMF will will say, and um, you know, Christine Lagarde is very vocal about this that uh, developing countries need to uh, replenish their fiscal buffers in the wake of that global economic crisis. But I think it's very clear that there's a balance to be struck in this. So, um, you know, at a time when countries, there's, an, uh, there's a massively urgent need for spending to both meet the MDGs and to start scaling up, uh, to start meet to, to prepare countries, put countries in a place to um, be on track for post-2015 goals, particularly if they're going to be really ambitious, if we're going to be looking at um, zero target goals, so if we're looking at things like, you know, no children dying of um, preventable diseases by 2030, this is going to in, uh, imply billions of dollars of expenditure, additional expenditure on health, on um, social protection systems by developing countries. So, you know, the fund needs to be working with low-income countries to um, expand their fiscal frameworks. Now, we're not saying this is all the IMF's fault. This is, this is obviously not, you know, direct causality. But, you know, the IMF should be doing that, should be working with line ministries and with... Um, uh, with finance ministries to say let's let's expand the envelope. We need to do it right now. Um, so uh, this is I'm I'm very excited to see that this this um, even more complete data set um, that can be used for advocacy purposes with donors like like the IMF. And obviously we need to do some more and better advocacy. Um, I'm actually also really unhappy to be here in some ways because um, I'd like to have been at a launch of this about five years ago. And I don't think that NGOs should be spending their um, valuable money uh, funding this, worthy a cause though it is. Uh, it should be the IMF who's doing this kind of monitoring. Um, they are, it's the IMF that's working again with line ministries and with, with um, yeah. finance ministries to look at these kind of budgets. And they should be gathering this data. Now to be fair to the fund, we've made this point to them as well. And they're starting now to report on things like health and education expenditure for a, a subsample of countries, which is, um, which is good, but we want to see more of it. Um, it comments we get from the fund include things like, oh, well, you know, the data isn't sufficiently robust. And the response to that is, well, it's your job to make sure that it is robust. Mm -hmm. And PS, you don't mind about robustness of data when you put decimal points in low-income countries' GDP figures, which we all know th that the idea that that level of accuracy is correct is, you know, I think is stretching the point. So if you're happy to stretch the point with GDP data, let's stretch the point with this. Let's not uh, let the best be the enemy of the good. Um, and the other very important thing about having the IMF monitoring this would be that it's sending a signal to finance ministries that this stuff is macrocritical, that it's um, that you know they need to be taking uh, pro poor expenditure seriously. They don't want to just be monitoring infrastructure expenditure. They want to be monitoring this kind of wider, broader expenditure. So. Um, but I'm happy to be here, really. <laughs> <laughs> right.